in charge of the Minneapolis Division of the FBI. I'm joined today by United States Attorney Chris Myers from the District of North Dakota and Chief Scott Johnson from the Grand Rapids Police Department. Today's announcement is a little bit different than announcements we normally do in that this is still a very, very active and ongoing investigation. So we'll be fairly limited in what we can say today, but we wanted to share what we believe is a very significant milestone in our case with you, as well as seek the assistance of the public in this investigation. Before I get started and why you all came here, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to some folks. I want to thank my folks, as well as our state and local partners, our federal prosecutor, all those that helped us in this case, multiple individuals inside the FBI across different divisions, our FBI laboratory, and our art crimes team back at headquarters. Their dedication and persistence with my folks here in Minneapolis helped us achieve this significant milestone today. So now why we're here. We're here today to share with you the recovery of one of the most significant and cherished pieces of movie memorabilia in American history. Dorothy's ruby slippers from the 1939 movie The Wizard of Oz. Those slippers were later stolen in 2005 in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. So a little bit about the slippers. There were multiple pairs of slippers used in the filming of this movie. However, only four today are known to exist. One, arguably probably one of the most cherished um, exhibits in the Smithsonian. A second pair was purchased by some Hollywood actors and later donated to the Academy of Arts and Sciences. A third pair is in the possession of a private party, not on public display. And then the fourth pair is the pair that we're here today to discuss. That pair was owned by a collector who donated it to the Judy Garland Museum in Grand Rapids. And they were stolen from that museum overnight, August 27th, 28th of 2005, never to be seen publicly until today. Last summer, working very collaborative with our local partners in Grand Rapids, we received a new tip and some information that we diligently pursued. Lots of interviews, several searches, only to later lead this summer to the recovery of these slippers. This is a significant milestone. And we wanted to share that today. While we've gathered lots of information on this case, we believe there's lots more to give. There's always intelligence that can be gleaned from the actual theft to the motive and helping us piece that puzzle together. Our hope today is that folks that are watching this, if you know something about the theft, something about where these slippers have been the last 13 years, that you come forward and you share that with us. In reading some of the lead up to this in the newspapers today, uh, one of the lines really struck me and has stuck with me throughout the day. And that was not only were these slippers stolen, but the memories of a lot of Americans were stolen back in 2005. And we hope today that we give those memories back. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce the United States Attorney, Chris Myers. Thank you. Again, my name is Chris Myers. I'm the U.S. Attorney for the District of North Dakota. Uh, the Department of Justice has asked our office to handle this particular investigation and work with the FBI. We have a team uh, working this office uh, out of our Fargo office. Um, and when we started this investigation, there were two goals. One was the recovery of the slippers, and two was to find those responsible for the theft and hold them accountable for this particular scheme. And today we've reached that first goal, the recovery. And it's a great day. And I want to congratulate uh, the FBI and Grand Rapids Police Department and all of the partners that helped these agencies along the way make it to this day. But we're not done. We have a lot of work to do. This is an ongoing investigation, so we won't talk about the facts of our investigation. And we will follow those facts where they lead and draw up charges as appropriate and if appropriate at a later time. While we can't talk about the facts, I'll talk about art crime just briefly in a general fashion. 
why it's important for us to investigate and prosecute these crimes. There's a certain romance in these types of schemes, sometimes sophistication, but at the end of the day, it's a theft. And this type of theft could be described as rampant. There's about 8,000 items of art or cultural property on the FBI's national list. These types of offenses not only deprive the owner of the property, but all of us. This type of cultural property is important to us as a society. It reflects our culture. It holds our memories. It reflects our values. And that's why you're all here today focused on what's behind the curtain. And why you hope that I stop talking. <laughs> but I also want to urge the public for their assistance in helping our investigation move forward. As the SAC noted earlier, there's information out there that could help this investigation move forward. And you'll see in the press release this affects a number of jurisdictions and we hope that people come forward and provide us additional information so we can reach that next step of this particular case. With that, I'll introduce Chief Johnson. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming to uh, this very rainy afternoon here in Minneapolis to listen for a f to a few words. But you know, after the rain comes what? The rainbow. <laughs> and someplace over the rainbow, we might have the ruby red slippers. Thirteen years ago, the ruby red slippers were stolen in the middle of the night from a museum on the south end of Grand Rapids. Our police department followed up on each and every lead that we received over the years. Everything from they are nailed to a wall in a roadside diner in Missouri, to they're at the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. Yeah, we know that. That's another pair. To, I was with my boyfriend when he threw them into a water-filled iron ore pit. That narrows it down. We've got a lot of iron ore pits up in northern Minnesota. Part of the problem is that in addition uh, to multiple pairs used in the film, there are a great many reproductions out there. Several months ago, our police department received some information that appeared to have more credibility. This investigation took us outside the state of Minnesota. Now, municipal police departments do not have jurisdiction outside the state of Minnesota, nor are there many in Minnesota that have the resources to perform an investigation outside the state. Therefore, we reached out to our partners in the FBI and the agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation worked relentlessly on this case. As the police chief of Grand Rapids, I'm very impressed as to the dedication <laughs> of our officers of the Grand Rapids Police Department. They remained committed to eventually finding these slippers. As a department, the Grand Rapids Police Department is most grateful to the men and women of the FBI whose hard work led to the recovery. You know, they're more than just a pair of shoes, the slippers. They're an enduring symbol of the power of belief. And I know I speak for everyone in our Grand Rapids community when I say that we are very, very pleased that the public, again, has a potential opportunity to view this piece of Hollywood's most treasured piece of our nation's film history. Thank you. Now, under the rainbow. All right, folks, um, with that, thank you. Um, we're going to take some time, set up a couple of lights over here to get you a little better shot. If you need to reposition your cameras or anything, feel free to do so now. Uh, thank you again for coming. I'll be sticking around here um, uh, with any follow-ups any follow you may have. So thank you again. Folks, if we could also... Um, 
this is kind of valuable evidence, so if you can keep a good distance here. I had some stanchions, but I didn't want to bring them out for you, so um, I'm going to set up some, some lights here that maybe help bring some lights over. So, yeah, if we could kind of maintain a decent distance. Again, you'll all have your chance uh, to grab the photo, so. Grab some lights.